So welcome, Chef Kyle Kawakami. So glad to have you today. Uh, this is our first podcast from Maui no Ko'oi and Silver Shark Media, and we are really excited to have um, Chef Kyle with us. Chef Kyle owns Maui's Fresh Streetery, a food truck, and uh, he's been a huge contributor to our community. So we're really excited to hear from you, Kyle. Aloha. Glad to be here. So when I first met you, you were um, an instructor at Maui Culinary Academy. Which that is, is now, correct. Yeah. Um, but tell me what life was like before that. What, what, where did you start? You know, culinary was not my first career choice, although I loved cooking. Uh, I loved cooking growing up. I cooked in high school. You know, guess what? I worked at McDonald's when it was still the cool place to work. And I worked in, in restaurants through college. But I actually mm -hmm. graduated from um, the University of Hawaii at Manoa with a degree in zoology. And wow, so, you zoology. Know, my, yeah. So my, you know, my initial career choice was to, it was an emphasis on marine biology. And I wanted to, you know, kind of do that field. But unfortunately, there's not a ton of career choices, not a mm -hmm of places to work out there if, unless you're you know a researcher and in 2002 i had the opportunity to actually go back to culinary school and i attended the maui culinary well it was the maui culinary academy i guess it's yeah the university of hawaii <laughs> maui and this it's a long one it's the i think university it's of hawaii, the university maui. of hawaii maui college culinary arts program yes that's it yeah. <laughs> You got it. So I actually went through the program, graduated, started working. One of my first, you know, true culinary positions was uh, at the Fairmont Keolani under Chef Thailand Pang, who's a, you know, a good friend of the, the oh, yeah. program and the magazine. And, and seemed, you know, he was really my very first culinary mentor. Thailand, Chef Thailand Pang was our first chef of the year for Ipono. And wow. you, you were our 2019 chef of the year. So that is that's amazing. pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Chef Thailand has always been there for me. I, I still keep in touch with him. And he is j just somebody that I've looked up to and kind of patterned my culinary career, I guess, on, against, oh, or on. He's an incredible mentor. And um, I would say you're doing a good job <laughs> of being yeah, very much, you. very much like Thailand. So I, yeah, I worked at the hotel for a, a few years and then uh, the, the college called and said, hey, we know you have your bachelor's degree and, you know, you're working in the culinary arts field. Do you, would you like to, I was an older student. And so, you know, they asked if I'd want consider coming back and doing a part-time teaching gig and that turned into full-time and 10 years down the, the road, I, you know, taught everything from intro to batch cookery, short order cookery, garmage, the fine dining class at classroom, you know, uh. pretty much the gamut of the classes. So, and you were there for 10 years. That's, that's a long stint. Yeah, it was. And what what gave you the the courage, I should say, of of um, branching out on your own and starting your food truck? You know, one of the one of the classes and you know, the, with the beginning students was always uh, kind of a, a lecture that we talked about, which was food trends. And one of the food trends we that always seemed to come up through the ten years was the idea of food trucks. And you know, at the time the food truck scene was really kind of exploding in San Francisco and Portland and places like Austin, Texas and across the United States. And, and we are starting to see it slowly trickle over to Honolulu. And we, I kind of noticed that it's sort of Honolulu gets a trend, you know, a year or two after the West Coast and then <laughs> yeah, Maui right. seems to get it a year or two after Honolulu gets it. So, yeah, so we kind of you know, know it's I, coming. <laughs> yeah, you know, you kind of kind of see what, what's moving and making its way across the Pacific. You know, that was on my radar. January of 2013 is when I departed the college. Took, you know, about a half a year to sort of feel things out and see what direction I wanted to go in. And for me, the, the choice was either to go back into something like a hotel position mm -hmm. And, and I knew what that entailed and I knew the long hours and the, ded the dedication and the requirement to make that career work. And it really wasn't that appealing to me. I, I, I had younger kids at the time and I kind of wanted something where I could still be involved with them. Mm -hmm. And so I started seriously looking at the idea of a food truck. I think, you know, at that time in 2013, there were probably two to maybe five. It was in the single digits. 
Yeah. Most of them were just doing local food, you know, chicken heka and chow fun and hamburger steak places. And, and nobody was really doing anything that was being explored on the mainland uh, where, you know, if you looked at the San Francisco scene, you know, you had classically trained chefs that were kind of leaving their brick and mortars and going out and away from corporate positions to play around with the food truck idea. And, and that hadn't been happening here on Maui. And so... Right. I thought, hey, why not give it a try and, you know, implement some of the things I was teaching at the college and some of the concepts and go from there. And that's kind of how my Fresh Street Route was born. We started looking around for a, a vehicle and we found it on Oahu and we took the plunge. It's <laughs> sort of a, a, le it's a leap of faith. And, yeah. and we, you know, we, we started, you know, using that time to market and brand it and get it ready for its debut on Maui. Did you have to reach into your own pockets? Did you find financing? Did, how, how did you, because I, I imagine it's a pretty big investment to um, start you know, a I had, truck. I, I had most of it covered. Um, you know, I, ha I had a little bit of backing from some smaller individuals that just, you know, to get me through it. But really, it was kind of, you know, my own savings that we, we, we plunged into it. Yeah, so you just had faith. You just just had the faith. Yeah, you know, it. It, it's uh, you know, and, and that's kind of always been my concept. Was I, you know, I always wanted to kind of, kind of be my own boss and in, in control of my own destiny without having to really answer to a, a backer or an investor. You know, it's it's sort of live by your own, live and die by your own sword. And yeah, and, I know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so. <laughs> That's that's kind of the reason why you know we didn't go that route of of you know finding somebody to finance it and yeah, that's that's incredible good for you yeah so you're uh, an entrepreneurial spirit behind all those that, that, I guess you could call that years. yeah yeah do you sometimes see your students coming to the food truck or have followed some of your students' careers through the years and um, oh see? most most definitely you know like I think I you know at last count when I left the college in thirteen. You know, I, I estimated that I had been an instructor for somewhere between 800 to 1,000 different students. Wow. Uh, yeah, and um, I still keep in touch with a lot of them. It's hard not to go out to a restaurant and not see a former student either as a chef or a sous chef or, you know, on the line cooking. I've, over the years, had several different students of mine helping me on the truck. It's a small island, and it's a very tight-knit culinary yeah. community so uh, it's hard not to and also i think it um, attests to the success of the program too that everywhere you go you see your graduates so yes sort of most definitely tells us that that program was uh, extremely successful and that you had a big part of, in making it so I, I remember those years yeah yeah very well um so one of the things that i know you've done with the food truck is you've had this tip can and um, mm -hmm. tell us about that what you've what you've done with that it's called the Aloha Tip Jar. It was born out of my concept for wanting to be connected with the community. And, you know, growing up, being born and raised here on Maui, there are always restaurants that stuck in my mind that were more than just a place to eat. They were really community hubs. They were the place where customers knew each other. The owners knew the customers. And, you know, we're really gathering places and these kind of pillars within the community. And we still have a few of them yeah. left, but we've lost quite a few. You know, the Kitadas in Makawa. I was going to say Makawa you know, in Kitara. Yeah, you know. Makawa Steakhouse the, used to be like that. Yeah, the you know, the you know the Aloha restaurants and the Golden Jades. And, yes, and, you know, oh, we, I love we, Golden you Jade. Know, <laughs> you know, we, we, unfortunately, we've, we've seen a lot of those mom and pop restaurants kind of fall by the wayside to a bigger you know, corporately run chain restaurants. And, and you know, I don't know if that's an, a, the, a sign of the times. I felt like starting the food truck, I wanted to kind of be connected to a community. Oh, well, maybe and, the food trucks are the new mom and pops, you know? I mean, yeah. It's, you know, things, that's, what, that's what I things think. Things change, but things stay the same. You know, maybe it has a new yeah. face, but here, here we go. Yep. You're, you're the new mom and pop. Yep. And so, you know, the, the, the tip jar, you know, was my way of saying, hey, you know, every month we're going to, take these tips, whatever we collect, and we select a, a new nonprofit every month, uh, or a, a, it can be a nonprofit, it can be a family in need, it can be a, a school program that needs some outside funding, really things that are smaller that don't necessarily meet the criteria for large grants or kind of federal fundings. And, so and it's more like community just, funding, like 
small, small yeah, community. you know, it, it's always, it, we don't go outside of our Maui community. We don't fund bigger programs. It's always something small. You know, we've done the Maui Food Bank, Women Helping Women. Right now, our, our tip jar is going to Na Hoa which is a senior citizen outreach, nonprofit senior citizen outreach. Oh, I mean, we, we, yeah, we've done everything from school garden programs to like I said, families that need assistance with medical treatment for children that have cancer. It, it, it runs the gamut. It's, it's, so you're like an it's, angel, um, just kind of, y- yeah, you know, it's, it you was, send a check every once in a while to somebody. It's cool. Yeah. Somebody. You know, it's an, it's a, an attestment to our, our customers. They are just the best ever. I, I, I'll put up my you know, how good does that customers. Feel when, you, when you know you're putting your, your, you know, couple of dollars in the jar that you know that that's going to help yeah. somebody. And so it would yep. make you feel good about doing that. I, I it think. does. Yeah. It does. And, and you know, over the over the last, let's see, we are going on seven years right now. I think last tally is somewhere just over the $100,000 mark. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. Yep. Wow. <laughs> that is very impressive. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's evolved and it's done different things and, you know, right now, the last year, we, you know, it changed and it moved into something bigger, which was our pay it forward program for the mm-hmm. federal workers during the federal shutdown. And that pay it forward concept was a way for people to like buy a meal, you buy a meal for yourself and you buy a meal for someone else and they can pay for a meal. And if that family or person was in need of something, they could just come up and grab a meal for free. And so during that federal shutdown, I think we did almost 600 meals for workers whether they be tsa air traffic controllers coast guard anybody that was affected by that government shutdown and so you know right now because of this whole COVID-19. pandemic yeah. uh shutdown mm-hmm. we've re-established that i, I you know I, I was hoping to never have to start that up again because it was you know it's just kind of something you reactivate in times of dire need and yeah i think so, dire need is here It is, it is. And so we've reactivated that and that's ongoing right now. So, you know, people have been donating monies worldwide, pretty much. We've had donations electronically come in from the United States, from Washington, from New York, overseas, from Australia, New Zealand. How do they do that? Most of the people feel comfortable doing it via Venmo or PayPal. For our Venmo site, when you go online, if you have Venmo, you do a search and the search is at Kyle-Kawakami-1. It's amazing. Right now, our community, there's a lot of need. Where is the truck there's, now? Where can people find Maui Fresh Streetery? We have really changed the way we kind of do business, at least for now. So, you know, we had three different locations. We were in Maui Lani for a day and then up in Wailuku on Wednesdays. And Fridays were kind of used for catering. And so really, we've we've cut our back our hours of operation. So really, right now, we are only doing one day a week, and it's on Friday nights from 5 to 7 p.m. at Ultimate Air Trampoline Park, which is in the Maui Lani commercial area. The address is 21 La'a Street, which is right down the way from the, the East Hardware there off of Maui Lani Parkway. Well, so what we've done is we have changed our service style. So we call it zero contact service. So everything is served via meal prep style. Meaning it's still our food, and we still garnish it and make it pretty, but it's just it's packaged in microwavable meal prep containers that are packed for you to take home and reheat at home sort of a new age bento box yeah kind of a new age bento <laughs> box yeah you know we, we do everything from you know we've done everything from chicken cacciatore uh, let's see last week we did a pork belly and hominy chili verde oh you know this week we this week we have a cream of mushroom soup and a roasted beet salad and so we're doing our poke bowls we have a chicken cutlet with a, a herbed gravy you know, it, oh. it, every week it every week it changes, and it's all packaged, labeled, and chilled for you to take home. And what that does is that cuts down our contact time, mm-hmm. and we actually have kind of moved it even further. And we call it zero contact. I think we're one of the first on the island to do it. Customers stay in their cars, and they line up. We we use the the ultimate air parking lot as kind of a, a staging ground, mm-hmm. and so we have a table outside, and and they line up their cars in kind of like a drive through and the customers stay about 10 feet away from me. I use almost like a mango picker or an extension that has a little basket on it, and they can put in their credit card in the basket, and 
then they tell they give me their order. Customers are required to wear masks. Um, Good for you. Yeah, we take that we and we're wearing full masks and gloves and eyewear. We take their credit card. We spray it with an alcohol spray or or a sanitizer to clean it. We take their order. We run the credit card. We assemble their food in a paper bag. We put it on a separate table with their with their payment. Then we step back into the food truck, which is about 20 feet away, and the customer opens their door, gathers their food, and then they take off. Wow, that is a great system. Yeah, and, and so it's worked. You know, it's incredible. I mean, a lot of us it, are it, hankering for some. <laughs> some yeah, you know, chef it, inspired it, you know, food at this point. I I think right now people are. People, one, one, uh, first off, people are scared. You know, people are scared and confused of what's going to happen and what's going on. And, you know, we're lo- local people. We find comfort in food and we find comfort in eating with family. If we can provide a little bit of normalcy to people's lives and where they can kind of take their mind off and have a dinner, that's not something that they are eating leftovers or something that they had to cook. Then, you know, I yeah. think it's, it's important. And really our, our system has evolved. We, this is our going on our fourth or fourth week that we've done it. And um, well, it sounds like you know, you're, you're it's certainly one of the people contributing to the solution. It's, um, it's one. Yeah, you know, and, and, you know, the, the, uh, the location has kind of turned into a food hub too, because not only do we provide food, but you know, I, the way I looked at it was, you know, I'm just a small piece of a a bigger culinary community, which involves not just restaurants and waiters and waitresses, but our farmers and our fishermen and our purveyors. And so now I've partnered with Okoa Farms and Kumu Farms, and so we're selling their farm boxes. Oh, uh, it's a different it's a different vendor every week because I kind of try to spread it out. We don't take anything from it. It's a way for them to market their products and move items and for us to support them so you are um true aloha spirit showing people you know we do we take take care of each other that's we do we do and you know and and, and, you know it's and it's kind of in self-interest for myself too because i can't exist without these farmers and these purveyors like i need them to keep going because you know if they close then i'm stuck and so really and I'm trying my best as yeah. hard as I can to, you know, support. So there are as things. Much local. I mean, I, I think what's wonderful about this story is is that there are things we can do. I mean, it's um, there are, and what you do uh, not only helps people in in need, but it's helping other farmers. It's helping other purveyors. It's really uh, contributing to the system that will hold all of us up. Um, I think so, so that's you know, that's kind of what's wonderful about that is that it's not just it's it's you know we drop a penny into a pond and we see what happens it um, touches a lot of people and makes life yeah. better for a lot of people you know I, I, you know it's the the world we're in right now and the situation we're in is definitely scary and it's definitely sad you know there's a lot of people that are in trouble and need help and we're, you know we're there to you know try to do our part but I think in the bigger picture of things, you know, one, it's us making a difference day by day, whether it's, you know, it, it doesn't have to be going out and feeding people. It can be just, you know, calling a neighbor, checking in on somebody. I've right. I've reached out, you know, via phone to as many of my fellow culinary people as possible just to check in and see how they're doing. And, you know, everybody can do that. You know, everybody can pick up a phone and just call somebody that you haven't talked to in a bit and say, hey, how's it going? Yeah. And, and. And, and in the bigger picture, I think it's going to be a reset for our island. And I think if we learn anything from it, I, I hope we can see that, you know, we have to do a better job at, of being sustainable and supporting our community and our people through, you know, if, whether it be local agriculture or sustainable practices or right. industries that are, you know, I know we're, we're really based on tourism and you know that's you know un- unavoidable but if we can start looking at how we can keep our our people employed that isn't so dependent i think that's important yeah well ho- hopefully too i mean this will inspire you know small farmers uh to to you know help feed our community and we have more like you said a more sustainable community i think that's that's yeah. really and, important and, to and us. you know 
we're we're two to three weeks into this quarantine and I'm seeing it already because you know this just this morning I, I took a drive up to Kumu Farms and mm-hmm. I needed to get a few items and I, I try to support their small little farm stand and I go early because I, I go right when they open because nobody's there and, right. and it's nice I can shop comfortably you know I still have my glove and my mask on but no there's nobody in there so it's nice it's and you know talking with one of their workers they're like oh my god i can't believe how busy we are we, we just it, we're, we're having a hard time keeping up with orders and that's gr- uh, you know i was like isn't that great yeah <laughs> that's, that's great you know, that's, that that's that is that's wonderful uh, and that, that's wonder, a good thing yeah that's a very good thing so and i think too you touched on interesting note when you talked about you know reaching out to people i think one of the one of the difficulties during this time um is people being lonely so really part of our outreach that we do with this whole pay it forward, we, we kind of coined it and changed it a little. So I don't even call it pay it forward anymore. We call it Kokua meals. And, you know, part of it is, is, you know, you know, people are like, well, you only open one day a week. Well, you know, we, this past week, I, I try to use the weekends and the early part of the week because we, we, I have a network of, of volunteers that are able to go out and are willing to go out into the community to drop off food to families in need and uh, seniors, kupuna, that are socially isolated. You know, to give you an example, this, this past weekend, uh, somebody donated two whole uh, butchered deer. Wow. And, and they, you know, they brought me this beautiful cooler of, of, of freshly butchered deer, and we made uh, almost 50 gallons worth of, of venison stew and distributed, you know, probably over 150 meals to to people in need, all for free. Oh, I mean, wow. no, no charge. That's it's incredible. it's. Um, Thank you. And they, you know, I don't actually. I socially distance and and quarantine myself as best as I can. Yeah. Because I really don't want to get sick. Because if I do, then, you know, the the system that I've kind of started shuts down. Right. But I I have a network of people. I call them my food angels. There's about you know five or six of them, that have volunteered to go out uh, that have a network of of kupuna you know i have a, a one girl that is she takes care of 25 seniors that are socially isolated and 20 wow. families that are you know in in need and so we we try to distribute ready-made meals uh when i come across you know farms you know the first week of the shutdown when the restaurants are shutting down mama's fish house donated probably 5,000 pounds of food for us to, to give away the Fairmont and Chef Thailand, you know, we shot out there on a moment's notice to help them clear out their fridges of all the product that was, that they couldn't use anymore to donate. It's going on a lot of places. And yesterday we picked up, if you can imagine, 1,500 pounds of, of pasteurized scrambled eggs wow. to help donate to families. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, yeah. I mean, just must make you feel wonderful to be able to do all that and and um gosh i just want to say mahalo from the whole community yeah yeah definitely you know definitely for me being on social media it can be very taxing and exhausting at sometimes you can get social media overload and too much news and too much grim news and i try not to get on there too often and so by being involved with you know, doing these things, it keeps my mind busy and it keeps me motivated day by day, knowing that, hey, today I got to get up. And, you know, I, I cooking is what I do, you know, yeah. and that's what I love to do. And if I can wake up and say, hey, I got I, I, I got something to do today. I got, you know, I got 50 meals I have to make to get out to seniors because they're waiting for it. It gives me a, a motivation to, to, to keep going every day. Great. Well, w- one of the things that, you know, we didn't get to do is uh, the IPONO Awards, which was scheduled uh, for this month, and we had to yeah, I know. On that. But um, I wanted you to, you know, sort of uh, tell us a little bit what it was like to be chef of the year last year, and how that felt. Oh man, that was uh, amazing. That is probably I, you know, I, I refer to it as probably one of the highlights of my career. In the, to be recognized, you know, not only from readers and 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 people that voted for us for food truck of the year, but to be recognized as chef of the year. And if, you know, people listening don't know chef of the year is only voted upon by restaurant people and chefs and cooks. And, and so you have to be in the restaurant to 
cast your vote for the restaurant of the chef of the year just to be recognized by my peers for our accomplishments um it means the world it it sh- gives validity to what we do and it, it shows that you know it shows that, that you, know, you don't have our community knows what they're doing you know you're right um yeah. just to tell our, our our listeners chef of the year is voted on only by chefs um and it's you know one of the uh, very f- it's the only award like that where it's voted on only by peers so your your other chefs who have said this is the guy yeah. this is the guy that's the best chef on Maui right now and, and you know that that uh, that evening you know to receive that award and one of the first people to come up and congratulate me was uh, Chef Thailand Pang and you know that <laughs> that was magical you know to to get it and have him there and you know yeah. it's kind of full circle it's He's sort of magic to uh, be around. <laughs> <laughs> it is, you know, it and yeah, it meant a lot. We were really happy to see you get it. Um, and, uh, thank uh, you. Looking forward to celebrating with you in the fall. So we'll yes, some, we will. We, yeah. you know, we I, I I you know I I talk to a lot of the the chefs out there and former chef of the years and people the executive chefs of hotels that are you know this is um this we're in uncharted territory for our field and our restaurants and and hospitality communities i don't think anybody's ever experienced anything like this as far as a complete shutdown for me it's it's like i'm just busy working because i you know i I, with the food truck i do everything myself anyway so it's and i've been i I joke around and say that i've been socially isolated for uh the last seven years working on a food truck (laughs) i always try to Um, keep a positive note with with my fellow, you know, culinarians and say, Hey, you know, take the time right now and, you know, rest and heal your bodies and, you know, relax and enjoy some family time and get ready because, you know, we have our work cut out for us. There's a lot that we're going to have to do to bring our culinary field back up. (laughs) Very grateful to have you on the front line, Kyle. Can you um, you. tell our listeners one more time if they're interested in uh, donating to your tip can? Uh, how to do that? Yeah, so right now our Aloha Tip Jar, which is going for our Kokua meals, it is a fund set up to help our community feeding uh, families in need, socially isolated seniors, keiki that are our children that are in, in need of food. We're doing sort of a pay it forward. Uh, you can donate via Venmo, which is probably the most convenient way. And my Venmo tag is at capital Kyle, so capital K-Y-L-E dash capital K-A-W-A-K-A-M-I, which is my last name, Kawakami dash one. So at Kyle dash Kawakami dash one. Oh, mahalo. I um, I hope our listeners are, are interested in, in, in helping. It's a wonderful cause. And Thank you so much. You have done a wonderful job. I'm just so thrilled to be able to talk to you, Kyle. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us.